Good morning. Welcome to the Board of Education's work session. Could I? During this meeting, we ask that you turn off. Oh, I'm, no, it's not me. I'm sorry. Good morning. Welcome to the Board of Education work session. This is a public meeting that is being videotaped for Queen Anne's County citizens to review on QAC TV 7, a local cable station. The agenda is available on the information table. During this meeting, we ask that you turn off your cell phones and hold personal conversations outside of the meeting room. Please join us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Uh, let's see. I need a motion to accept the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it. During this work session, we will be reviewing and editing our board handbook. Uh, do we want to turn this over to Darren at this time? Or how do how we want to do this, Darren? Are we going to do this page by page? Well, my, my recommendation, and we talked about it, I think, in, in previous meeting or meetings, including, gosh, several months ago, is right. you were seeking to resume your um, momentum on this project that I think dates back uh, to last year. I, I think the best approach for the board, since you're not going to create a wholesale and brand new document, but in fact make changes, each individual board member may have their own preferences or what does or doesn't need to be changes. I think whoever's chairing the meeting is best perhaps to uh, go through section by section, so in order of the document, but entertain motions for changes from fellow board members. And then if, if any motion for a revision at least earns a second, you're then open the floor to discussion those changes. They could in turn be opportunities for legal advice. They could be staff advice, you know. Uh, and, and my approach, since this is a, a public meeting, is if there's legal advice that perhaps relates directly to litigation or some sort of personnel or other confidential matter, I'll advise you that, that this might not be the setting to okay. provide the advice, but I, I don't anticipate that with, with this sort of document. Um, you know, and so I'm, I'm taking notes, perhaps backing Jackie on this, and, 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 and to the extent you all are making changes, I'm, a mon I'm monitoring and I'm advising when needed. Okay. All right. I don't even know how to figure my number out. So I guess if we're gonna, <laughs> if we're gonna go page by page, we need to know that we need to, the first page is um, quite obviously um, all well, right. cover. The whole cover, cover is the very first. Whole cover thing. letter mm -hmm. needs to be done again, and it, always the date at the top on every page, the whatever date we revise. Okay, the uh, second page also. Yep. I'm thinking as of now three through eight, nine, ten. Okay, so three through 11 is basically the book, so. Yours is a little different than us. I think you needed to print out, because see, you have, your page 12 is not my page 12, is it? I wondered about okay. that because I, that is, I wasn't that sure is. either. You have 13. It is. Then you should, so you're going from here. Right, am I wrong? To the so history. Short. I don't think we need to change the short history. If I was no, short. I wasn't now going to. Changed. See, that was my page 12. So I don't have do any I changes until page do 16. I, need a book? It, I think you mean to the appendix, so the, the table of conducts through the appendix. I would use this and try to okay. go off and back. All right. I so don't have any changes until page 16, so I well, don't know how far you can go. Well, I think what we need to do is go to the authority and responsibilities of the Board of Education. Okay. That sounds good. We had talked about reviewing that anyway since yes. we have new board member. Um, Darren, I yep. believe we were going to talk about the responsibilities yep. and roles of the board. Yes, and, and I'm trying to backtrack too much as we go along. <coughs> the only thing I will su suggest to you is for pages like page 9, which is an appendix listing statutes and authorities, you can assume that at such time makes sense as we circulate your next version. To the extent I need to catch up the law with the references here, I'll do that. I mean, we just had some of the code books were just published. Uh -huh. Some are still not okay. yet published 
on the July and October effective statutes. So we'll make sure this is all caught up. That's kind of one of those things you do towards the end, mm -hmm. just like you're going to probably end up with a, well, you will end up with a 2018 date, not a 2015, 16, right. or 17 exactly. date. So I will, I will be watching out for those. I just want you okay. to know if you don't want to do every citation as we go through here, right. we'll get that right. Okay. Okay. So uh, in terms of getting back to where you are about authorities and responsibilities, um, we, we did talk before about, uh, you know, briefly touching on those uh, as we have a new, as you all have a new board member. I will say that um, for the most part, year by year, you don't see changes in the authorities and responsibilities statutes uh, and to a lesser extent regulations. Um, you know, local or county board of education responsibilities have been set down for a long time now. Obviously the state board opinions flesh that out a little bit. Um, for the most part, I think there are some tried and true uh, touch points that I'd share with you. I think one of the things to keep in mind, uh, some of you may remember this from the first time I sat with you uh, in a closed session when we were talking about an appeal case. Keep in mind that you are individual board members and the statute recognizes as such and you in this particular board uh, are here by either an election or appointment in certain, certain, certain circumstances. But really, your legal operation on behalf of the school system comes as a body. And in fact, there's a statute 4-101 4 4 of the education article that even talks about that you're a body corporate and politic. And, and, I, and I come back to that a lot with boards when it's all said and done because I remind them that like a corporation under state law in Maryland, there's, there's a whole set of statutes for corporations, you exist to perform your duties and your statutory mission as a group. And so when you meet either an open or closed session, you're meeting as a body. When you take action by vote or sometimes by review and consent, or however it is your staff brings an, uh, an item forward or that you uh, bring forward by motion, you are approving it or not approving that item as a group. You have individual votes, they're calculated, certainly Jackie will track votes on things, but once the vote's done, it, there are no individual votes per se as relates to the action. That's now in the past. The action is an action of the board. And that segues to sort of one of the other touch points I like to mention is whatever goes into making a decision, and certainly there can be disagreement over issues, not, not every vote is unanimous, not, sometimes a, a five nothing vote still reflects five very different opinions and motivations. Whatever you say out in public, whatever that is, you should, I, I encourage you to respect each other. It, 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 you're, you are representing your constituents, you're representing um, the school system, and it's presumed that you are doing, per the statute, what your job is as a, as a board member. Once a decision is made, however, keep in mind that if it's an appealable item, you should refrain from commenting on, on what may have gone into that decision or that vote, because at that point, the vote's done. And so if an act is taken, for instance, that's subject to appeal to the state board, my, my strong recommendation of boards is don't go backwards in time, don't, 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 don't have discussions, certainly in public or, or in, in something that's uh, going to be considered a public meeting, about what happened and why in a case or an action you took because at this point it's now going to the next level and at this next level the state board level for instance or to a court they're only looking at was it approved or not approved okay and there is a whole area of law which is worth you knowing and applies to you county councils municipal town councils you are protected by very strong immunities because you're exercising your duties as, as officers of a, of a state-created body. In addition, your reasons or motivations are not grant for, for your individual votes are not really subject to discovery, as they call it, or for folks to force you to disclose. Other than what you say in public, in your commentary, and what's captured in minutes, your reasons for voting are what's on the record. And that's often why you would not see, let's say there's a 3-2 vote on something contentious, whatever it might be. You know, once it's done, it's done. And no one has a right to force any board member, yay or nay, to say, other than what's in the record, tell us your reason for your vote. Imagine that in a county council setting 
you know, on any number of issues or in a, a you know, a, uh, you know, a commission uh, voting on something. So, so it's, again, it gets back to it really is because your individual board member action isn't really the legal action of the board. It's the board's action. Another touch point is when you do have your closed sessions, and we know there's 14 reasons for which you can generally go into a closed session. Most of them make sense on their face. I mean, they're person specific personnel cases, specific student cases, legal issues, court cases where you're receiving legal advice. In those situations, uh, negotiations is another one, uh, right? And, and you're, you're trying to enter in a contract with, with your various unions. Remember that what you all talk about in those sessions, okay, is confidential by statute allowed by the Public Information Act to be held in a closed session. You're strongly advised not to then leave those sessions and talk about those deliberations or your fellow board members' comments to others because then what you've done is, in essence, you're risking waiver of what was an important statutory protection in the first place, is that you could have a closed um, deliberation. And, and, and there's cases and opinions out there in various venues and forum that talk about what happens when that that protection of, of confidential deliberations is breached. Um, there are opinions out there from various ethics panels about when, when boards haven't been happy with their own uh, because uh, I can think of two on the other side of the bridge where ethics complaints were brought um, because folks disclosed uh, in negotiations, I think one, and another was a very serious appeal case, actually disclosed to parties involved what was discussed in the closed session. And you just can't, you can't do that. Uh, and, and again, I say you can't do that. I mean, I advise you not to do that. Obviously, you're, you're creatures of free will. Um, but, but again, this gets back to what you're acting as. When you're in that closed session, just as in the open session, you're acting as a body of the whole. You're acting together in some direction, even if the together isn't necessarily in agreement. You are acting together on behalf of the school system. Um, beyond that, I think that the, the best advice I can give, and, and I think, Carrie, you have uh, experience in other bods and bodies and, 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 and commissions and things like that, so I don't think this is news to you, is um, occasionally go back to everything, from the handbook to the law, to your touch points of why you're doing this, how you're doing this, what puts you in this position. And just read it sometimes. It's kind, of, it's kind of good to go back and read the source material. Uh, I, I think of uh, the first part of Education Article 4-101 through, well, it's probably 4-101 through probably the 4-200s, where it talks about both the Board of Education and the superintendent's duties and responsibilities. I strongly recommend to all board members, go back and read those. <laughs> Some, from time to time they change, but I mean go back and read what's in the books now. Um, you all, I hope, have the one uh, Mabe published uh, Come in, right? set of statute, statutes and regulations, and then also there's a, a, a school law handbook. That's what we're getting now. We never had Good. that. Well, I, I, we I have think, the annotated code book, yeah. and it's right. just too difficult. Yeah. And no, I think we, ha we had it before. It's but sometimes there's not one for every board member, but I, wherever you can find those source materials, I encourage you to read them because A, they remind you of some of the things we're talking about here, but B, I think they'll remind you of what a really important job you do and are to be commended for doing and that it's serious, people should respect you for it, and there are ways you can perform the job that will encourage that respect. And, and, and I think all that goes towards your mission. So um, I, I, don't, I, I don't wanna get into too much detail on individual scenarios because that's better sometimes when we're doing legal advice on cases. Um, one thing I think this board has agreed to over time when it comes to legal advice is and I'm, my door's always open, my phone's always there, any of you want to call about a particular issue that you as a board are dealing with, I don't have a problem with that. But the general way boards operate is when there is a matter on which you are seeking advice, legal advice, for the board, you should talk to your officers first because ultimately, A, it can cost money. I mean, depending on how much you use your attorneys, um, it does ultimately become a cost issue. But also beyond that is, I think you want to have, you have officers for a reason. They're your interaction points with the superintendent often. They're your interaction points with the public. 
And I think there's nothing wrong with them being your sort of first point of interaction with, with legal counsel. Because sometimes it could be an issue that was addressed four months before you got here. And it won't be that new. And you can talk about it and maybe together look for where the real issue is and then give me a buzz. Um, and then just remember, whether you're talking to me or anybody else, because you're a body of five, if three of you are together conducting board business, you are holding a meeting and therefore should have worked with Jackie and others ahead of time to, to set that meeting up and provide the proper notice. But where that's less of an obvious situation where you have to also be cautious is if three or more members of a five member body are exchanging emails on board related business, there's body of law out there that suggests you are having a meeting. You know, and just because it might be president to vice president, vice president to somebody else, and then it sort of works its way around, I mean, you could see what, how that could be abused. And so again, we, we advise against you know, having informal meetings electronically or other ways, um, because as we know from open meetings complaints, there are folks that think it's important to watch this and hats off to them. And they will look for each example when they can. Um, Sharon and I have talked about this before. <laughs> you know, there are, there are folks who this is sort of what they do. They look to see if you are doing your job and I think you all are more than capable of doing it in conformance with the law, and, and I hope I can support that. Uh, I'm sorry for the long-winded answer, but I, I know we want to talk about some of these things. That's right. And you have, Darren. I want to thank you for always being available to us, no matter how nitpicky our questions are. I, I really appreciate that because I am not an attorney, but I read this handbook every time something comes up and I learn something new, every time I do it. That's a good point. So I appreciate it. My job. So did anyone have any questions about that first part there? We're on page, your pages 12 and 13? 30 and responsibilities of the board. Okay. Yes, 12 and 13. Um, policy development. You, um, as a board, just so you know, you should have a policy and I believe you do, about policy development. Most, most models out there not only talk about how you would, I mean, how you would adopt a policy, you know, it's generally by, by, by either the superintendent recommending it and, and brought forward in, as a presentation and a recommendation, or sometimes it's done from the floor or because of an issue that's come up. But one thing that's important to remember, if it's not in a policy, is often there will be a mechanism for policy to be overridden. And that's not something to be used often, but, but sometimes when some urgent issue comes up, for instance, a policy might say there'll be three readings before adoption. There may be a time where you want to dispense with three readings because something's urgent. The key, the key there is, if your policy addresses it, just follow the policy for how it is you suspend a policy. If some, some places make it unanimous, you know, you have to have unanimous of all people in the quorum to suspend a policy like that. I believe that um, Mark was working on a policy for policies. I, 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 I do want to add on behalf of the superintendent that uh, Mr. Farley is working on a revised, it's going to be policy development that will override the policy on policy. Um, the superintendent's been very adamant about, as well as the board, about that process. Uh, that will be coming before you at the January 10th uh, board meeting. Cool. So one of the things I'll take back to the superintendent is making sure that's in alignment with what is presented here. And, and I think I can piggyback on it and say I think this is correct because at least you and, and, and Ms. Wright and others are involved in it. I believe there's an ongoing effort to, to sort of consolidate, if that's the right word, and simplify, again I hope that's the right word, your website access point or points for the public and you, all of Absolutely. us, so that it is not necessarily 15 different places you might access policy and cross your fingers that it's all the same sets, but it's really behind the scenes all getting the user to one place, which is a one set of policies, not policies in draft, not policies that, that are almost done, but literally the current board policies and regulations. And that is the, that is the practice you should have. Yes. We all, I think we all agree on that. And I think that, that works in progress right and now. And I knew Dr. Kane's very admin on a clear numbering system so that it's mm -hmm. easy to navigate and find right. for all of our right. staff. A lot of systems, you all know this from MABE work, a lot of systems have gone to lettering. I, I think it started by your sisters and brothers in Montgomery County who probably from some best practice they read 
went away from 1, 1A, one 1B, one or 200, 201, to this, you know, JA dash RA. And, and, mm -hmm. and it was kind of the, almost like when we lost, this is showing my age, we lost what, the Dewey Decimal it System, just, yeah. and went to the Library of Congress, and my head started spinning because I kind of liked the basic numbers. I mean, there is that change, right. but I believe there were good reasons for it because it allows expansion and contraction within without constantly renumbering everything. That's one of the reasons. And again, that's all standard stuff. Mabe can guide on that. Uh, uh, that's below maybe the surface of what you're doing here. But, but I think the fact that, that the superintendent uh, <coughs> and, and Mr. Paluski and others are focused on this is a huge benefit to the school system. I think we agree on that. Mm -hmm. Did anyone have any questions on that? Okay, so we'll move on over to rules of order, norms, and procedures. I have a question on this one. This is 16 or we're, we're uh, 15. 15. Okay, 15. Thank you. It's on the quorum and the votes. If the way I've read this, and I don't, if, if you, you hold a meeting when you have at least three and understand that, but if you're going to make a decision, all three have to agree on that. Is that what we're saying? You have to be three to zero on all those votes in a situation where we only have three people there. And I guess that's because it would be the majority if you had all five there. Yes. But is that required when you have only three there, or do you need a majority only? Um, is there some rule about that? Is I, my question. I don't want. I don't want. I, I want you all to be have be able to have that discussion. But since you're asking me the question, as it's currently written, written, this suggests that no matter what number is there, three, four, or five, you'd have to have three votes at a minimum. And I don't know if to that's show a, a majority. To show a majority, so that yes. Is that a, this a isn't law? Right there. A statute? No, that's right, that's just exactly. the way this is written. Is this, okay, you so certainly could have a, oh, well. you could have a quorum. Say you, three. You could have a quorum of three, and have a two to one vote for something. The only place that doesn't work is when a statute specifically indicates, for instance, or a policy that you have somewhere else that a, we'll call it a student appeal, that a student appeal decision by the superintendent cannot be overturned absent at least five, in this case, three votes. If you have that, that that's, then that's gonna supersede anything. But if you don't want that and don't have any of the specifics and simply wanna be able to do work as a quorum, you would need to change that. And, but there's something to be said for when there's less of you here that more of an affirmative vote it should occur. I mean, I mean again, that's, I'm, I don't assume when language is here that people weren't thinking. I assume the thinking behind this was when there's less of you here, let's be sure that everyone's in agreement, to use layman's terms. But that, that may or may not be what you want. But we may not have that either. <laughs> Uh, we may not have that agreement. Right, which means you may not be able to, you may not take action on that vote. item. Right. Yeah. right. Now, not to go way ahead, but amending the handbook is completely against that thinking because it requires four affirmative votes. You mean in the, in the, in the handbook's terms, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, as it stands right now. Yes. Correct. So that's something I, which would mean, which would there, mean we'll the about. handbook couldn't be amended by exactly. a mere, a mere, Three a simple quorum. A quorum. Yeah, right. and, and again, I don't assume that's necessarily a bad practice. Maybe, maybe it shouldn't. I mean, this, right. you know, well, this isn't an LLC where there's, you know, someone with 99% ownership who controls the whole thing. Right. Well, that's what I was just getting ready to say. It's going to be an emergency decision amending the handbook. As a board of five people, then the quorum still needs to stay the way it is, which, like you said, four to one. And for an amendment. For an amendment. Would pass the amendment. Right. And but 3 0 would not. No. If no. we only or had three, two. 3. Right. 3 right. 2, 3 1, uh, 2 1. Not as it's None of that now. would. Right. We would right. almost always have to have four present to Absolutely. even carry a motion for a vote for an amendment. Of, of your handbook. Of our right. handbook. That's the way it's written now. That's correct. Okay. Right. And I don't mean to jump ahead, but that does play that's into this. That's a good this. thing to point out That's here. the only thing that is different from the quorum of three. Oh, okay. 
Okay. And for those that who I do know. legislative history analysis, if you think about it, that kind of thing appearing in the same document with this mm -hmm. suggests that mm -hmm. folks knew exactly what they were doing when they made it. wasn't a cavalier thing. It, it was let's right. have three out of three when we have a small number right. so that things aren't just sort of You know what through. my thinking for that is? So we are all clear about the rules that bind us according to this handbook. We wouldn't want anyone to be at a disadvantage in a situation where they weren't in session with us right. and all of a sudden there's a change oh, they, they missed right. or exactly. didn't clearly understand and now we have an issue. Right. That's what I think that's written yeah. for. Yeah. That protects us all yeah. right. and ensures that we all notify one another, hey, by the way, you weren't exactly. here Friday, but there's a change on the table and it's right. I, something I we need that. to discuss. I agree with yeah. that. Yeah. So Keeps keep, everybody on the same page. To keep your order, um, Beverly, did you have... Um, I just, I just. A proposed change? I'm just curious. I mean, well, I, I, I don't. I just wanted to know if, if, if three people do show. I've seen this in the past, not with these, this group, where three people agreed they would show up so they could pass something, and <clears throat> so they drug themselves in there to pass something, and they passed it. But it, it was three, it was required three, and I was like the fourth on the back side or whatever. So I think, I mean, I understand the purpose in that, so that it is always going to be a majority of the board, no matter who shows up to a meeting. Right. It just may be that less decision. can get done sometimes when there's less board members there. I think that's right. what, it, I think you're, you're hit right on what it is. And, and I think the language is clear enough in that regard. But that I, I guess I don't have a problem with it because, because as you're saying, we're supposed to be a board and we're, when a decision comes out, I would like to think that not two people out of five mm -hmm. made that decision. Well, be because, because there was only majority, three there. Right. right. And this forces a majority. Right. Now, keep in, but keep in mind, you have some limitations because of this. That, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I'm just saying you do. Could there be a situation where more rote tasks, let's say it's a tough weather night and you have three members here and you're having a normal meeting, public's all here. One of the first things you do every time is set an agenda. Another one's to adopt minutes, right? I mean, theoretically, you could have a situation where there's disagreement on the agenda and someone wants to change it. Well, again, this is going to say, unless all three of you who happen to be able to make it to that meeting are okay with that, mm -hmm. then you're not changing it. But I'm okay with that because mm -hmm. basically, yeah. even if all five of you are there and three vote for that change, it's going to happen anyway. So three is what's needed, whether there's three or five people here. So just just letting I'm you know, I'm there could be okay some things that, that don't get accomplished at a meeting with only three people. Well, I guess my feeling is, is that I wouldn't want to think that something were to happen at home mm -hmm. for any of us mm -hmm. as an emergency. Um, and just say two of us. What a freakish thing! But two sure. of us, something happens, sure. and there's something that's that's on the agenda to be voted on. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't want to think that you know. That that's Her emergency way. at home has to suffer because we have to do right. this. Exactly. Right. right. So that's and um, that's my opinion of it anyhow. And I think I think it's perfectly acceptable to poll your group outside of session as to whether we will have a quorum vote when we appear. I know many times the commissioners vote on something with only three people there. I have never seen them vote three to two. I mean, two to one. Mm -hmm. When they so are all caught in. in a vote of three, because two are absent. Right, right. There have been times they've been called away from a meeting exactly. on an emergency. Two of them had to leave. They right. still carry out their vote. Each time I've seen that happen, it's been a vote of three, zero. Right. So perhaps if there was a disagreement and you knew that, that's something it. you don't take into the public exactly. realm. Exactly. Exactly. Yet. Right. Yet. Either until you. We have, have always a, had um, discussion four, too that four, we don't five. make. I know emergencies happen, but we we always had discussed in the past that um, we don't vote on things during work sessions or other meetings, except for the the monthly meeting. Now I know that emergencies yeah. do happen, and you have to account for that. Right. But that was pretty much a standard that we we've been living by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just agreed upon standard, wasn't it? Like in the book here. Yeah, uh, that's what I just said. My question, one other one is, is the, and I, I didn't know where that was. I couldn't find it. Um, 
we had talked about how when we had the five that the president was a tiebreaker, not always a voter. That had happened when I first got on the board oh. here. But it wasn't written anywhere in the manual, so I can we even it. do that? That's what we did for a long time. It was a tiebreaker. I'm thinking it was an understood thing, but not really a yeah. legal thing. I couldn't the, find it. The, the president the was a tiebreaker? So break? there's right. only four people voting, and then if it came out as a tie, the president. Right. But it always ended up, th you know, three to two. I mean, that wasn't um, an issue, but it was the tie break at the time. I don't like that because it I takes away the vote of the president. Yeah. I agree. You know, and it only allows them to vote during at a time. Well, it also yeah. puts the president in charge, yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah. of every vote that could become yeah. a 2 2 vote. Yeah, it's not that. anywhere in this manual. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. find it either. I, just know um, that I do was, know was that, and I've set before many boards, which, which when you audibly vote, there's many times one doesn't. It's accidental it's never intentional I see it even at the commissioner's office uh, often being the president because they're busy doing the motions and carrying out the discussions and things like that my opinion is everyone should always audibly place a vote the president included I don't know that we would want to be a vote of four and mm -hmm. have a tiebreaker no. No. That yeah. could become a big problem, I think. Not just for us, boards in the future. We have yeah, to think this right. manual well, is for this future manuals, use. That's right. right. They'll exactly. change it according to their needs, but they have right. to start with something. Right. right. So. I think we always have everyone speaking, though, in us, because she always puts it in minutes. It's always got five people accounted Well, even for. wasn't it? Right, it, but if, we need to make sure everybody audibly. Well, if you don't vote. verbally okay. vote, yay or nay isn't it considered a yay i think if you don't vote nay it is considered a yay even yeah, if even you if didn't silent. say yay because or you, you didn't got say, I'm, distracted I'm, I'm not voting you know, you know, yeah you would abstain. abstain if you had an issue i think right and, so i think but, that but it's very important i think just so the public sees everyone did cast their vote okay i've seen them catch themselves over there mm -hmm. wait a minute i only heard four Secretary is only recording for, we need five here. Doesn't matter how they fall. Mm -hmm. um, one is real famous for sort of getting distracted and not audibly making his vote. Okay. So I think that we've, we've gone over, uh, Darren went over all of this. Um, the only thing that I noticed um, on this was um, we had talked about this, I guess at last month's meeting uh, was the we had never done this until last year, but it says an annual board evaluation and retreat. Right. Which means that we do have to hold that retreat. Unless we change this. Unless we change this. The one that's on the calendar? Is it slated already? Well, we, did we put one we, on there? We had one a on, and then we have so much going on at that time, right. that's budget time. Right. right. We said that we would adjust also, that right, there's nothing right, set in yes. stone that has to be in the spring the summer the fall the winter. no and it doesn't say it in here either right and it says as a separate meeting each year at a time and place to be determined so it could right. be june this year and it could be january next year it's not set in right, stone right i think it's an important point so there's nothing i would support this to stay in this book go ahead Oh, so there's nothing on January 22nd, 2018? There I, was, but okay, I think so we've I decided that, that that's... Yeah. Okay. But I think that was because don't we have something else for January 22nd? Or do we budget? not? Is that a budget? Leading that's a budget I, I think we've goes. instituted a that's budget a, yeah, meeting table instead. Table 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 right, table. right, right, we'll right. Yeah. Because clear. it is a budget. Yep. Are we haven't yet just we have budget meetings almost just, every week I, that I month. have a, my work calendar, so I block the days off and the oh, hours off that so I need. So I don't see clients during right. that time. Right. So, so I, don't take that don't away time-wise, right. but it may not be, I don't think the it will be the retreat. Be it's going to be a budget issue. A budget yeah, it looks meeting. like it's going to be a budget hearing budget is what it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't we vote on that? What would we vote to change that last meeting? We talked about it. I don't know if it was... It was agreed to not to have the, yeah, we, the we retreat. I don't think it was it. a formal vote. Okay. It's conflicting with the time we have to attend to the budget, and we're getting really packed tight. Because for that. doesn't it runs right into the um, because the meeting's not until what the seventh now? 
Or because the eighth or didn't something, do the first Wednesday. And it's two weeks later yes, is the 22nd. Yes. That's what We it needed was. that time for a budget meeting. We needed that for a budget meeting. We didn't just cancel that time. Right. But so the 22nd retreated. is for... Yes. Um, yes. In so fact, is there a time point. block now? I had the whole day blocked because I figured retreat um, means... Just like 11, 11 to 2. 11 to 2. So it was uh -huh. pretty normal work okay. yeah. session then. Okay. Yeah, if we if we have a work session, it's usually um, 11, to eleven to two. That's you know, and doesn't always go to two, but most times yeah. does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If we finish early, great. If we yeah. don't, right. we're fine. Right. But usually during bu budget um, meeting sessions, rather they're during the day or the e evening, they they run late. So not late, but it will run right up until the two o'clock okay. time. Would you like to for future? Would you like to have a break from board council that day and him not show for the budget? No, uh, do you on eleven twenty two. Why do you need to go somewhere? No, I'm checking with you. I'm just saying it's it's your um, it's your retreat. It's it's and oh, it's not gonna we're not gonna, gonna we're not retreat. gonna do the retreat. Right. We're actually going to only gonna to, do your budget. Do I don't budget. know but that we yeah. need whenever, council for budget. You're not gonna meetings. set this to a new date. That, okay. We probably don't need him no. for budget. No, not for budget. No, I assume so you can have a day off. You can have a day off. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll get all of those meetings. We'll give off you a day off. Right, well let me know if on if you end up setting a new date on the retreat, just let okay. me know. So I guess that we That's need to at some point address doing that retreat. If it's if we're gonna continue to keep it in the handbook, then we have to do it at some point in two thousand and eighteen. So we need to keep that on the the, um, keep it on there. I just happened to see that last night. Um, like I said, I, this is my, I'm going into my fourth year as a board member. Last year is the first year that we'd ever done that retreat thing. And um, so when I was looking at this last night, and I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. something that we were supposed, supposed to be doing. To be doing. There's now. several things in here that the yeah. case is yeah. that yeah. case. So um, um, my thinking, the reason it's important, not only because of the camaraderie, of course, but we do task certain things to certain people and the next year would be the time to evaluate did they get tasked do we have those committees built that we found we needed and are we on a good plan to to get those which I think we are Dr. Kane has developed and so has Greg several committees since our last retreat exactly which was a tasked item that we were and, kind of responsible for doing. Just one note to that. I do have the, I believe it was the 12 standards that we did the self-evaluation yes. mm -hmm. on. Dr. Kane has those. So oh, okay. That might be a good place to pick up when mm -hmm. you have the retreat. Oh, okay, that's self great. Because yeah. wasn't one of those committees a, a community budget committee or finance committee? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. I don't know policy, where we stand with that. Policy, policy was one. Was on mm -hmm. finance. Do, we want yep. to, um, do we want to use the same um person that we used um the last time do you want to you, check you can, with her you and can certainly have that i'll i'll uh, why don't you check in with to, her and to, see uh, what I'll kind of her dr. schedule kane and, and then maybe that's something you and dr kane okay can speak mm -hmm. about on okay. behalf of the board dr okay. kane might have somebody in mind well that's but i was too. perfectly yeah. happy with perlman i mm -hmm. think that's was yeah. her name okay so i think we have to discuss or motion or decide this either stays or goes, this item, the retreat item. Well, if we're not amending it, we don't need yeah, to vote. Yeah, if we're not going to take it out, we don't have to Yeah, you know, it just, I think it's, right. it needs to stay in there. I agree. My own opinion. I, my I'm opinion. fine with it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Carrie, if we get moving too fast, please stop us because you're new to this. <laughs> oh, no, I like to sit back and watch. So, but if you have any questions, and listen, so if we get a little while. farther ahead and you even have something back here that Go you want to ask, mm -hmm. please, yeah, you know, absolutely. please stop us and ask, okay. you know. Thank you. That's how we roll, that. right, guys? <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. Good. So then we're at the master plan accountability, be, uh, yeah, ability and continuous improvement. I'm actually fine with that. I don't know about everybody else. No, I was fine with that. I didn't see anything that needed to be no, I'm good with that. and we have a master plan we do and if you remember uh, uh innovation center team one which is looking at a, a, a revised strategic exactly. plan that they will they will bring the executive team for feedback and then eventually to the board for feedback okay, okay so we'll move on from there then we'll go on to membership on the board of education of queen Anne's <coughs> county excuse me Obviously, any of those, those are the, what, like I was talking about before, anything that's a recitation of statute, right. it'll be my job to just bring it current. 
you, you, for whatever reason, folks chose to have these in here, and unless you want to remove them from your handbook, I think the only obligation is to make sure they're the current copy. <coughs> I, th I was fine with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We get moving too fast if anybody just speak up. Um, annual compensation benefits, same. I don't want to touch changing that. I don't think we that. can um, change that. I that, think the commissioner said that, that actually. To change that or something. I do believe so. You should be on page 20 now. Yes. Okay, so now we will continue to move on to mission, uh, mission vis vision, values, and goals. I have no changes for page 20. And you said, um, Greg, when I asked about that, as we get through your your process with your innovation center, we, we may want to go back to changing uh, these later. I, I, I would agree. I, I, I can already yeah. see there's already a changes to these goals as they're currently. Mm -hmm. They're no longer five, there are four. So we can do one of two things. We can, I can get you that information and update that, but it will also have to be updated again, again once, once the new strategic plan and the oh, goals. Oh, okay, okay. Also, just a side note to this, to, to be mindful, is that with the new Every, Every Student Succeeds Act, the ESSA plan, this is also gonna have to change because the accountability measures are getting ready to change. Okay. So we'll give you an update on the board once we learn more. Right. Uh, you'll see that in the weekly update in my section. The state board has just got information on that they got some feedback from the the federal government so they're working through some of the nuances of that i only say that because this will change in in the next but six we're months. not quite ready your amendments there. will be yeah. needed. that's all i'm going to note on it okay. yeah well the other thing with this is the development of this as i understand it came from and you probably knew about this one sharon they had a big huge program of involving the community <coughs> And they had, you know, we had big meetings of all, and a lot of input from community members, pe you know, yes. parents, and I mean, it was a huge ordeal getting this done where they established these items. And I wonder, it's been a long time since they had that, it was way before my time, that it might be useful if we're gonna make a massive change to, to, to do something more like that again. I so don't agree. Community, community input on yeah. our mission as a board based on oh yeah state uh, uh, guidelines and ESSA plans. I'll bring it in and show you. I, we I, made I, a nice pamphlet. Well, about that's because it. we went from an elected board, uh, an appointed board, to an elected right. board. That was right. the reasoning behind it. Had to be built somehow. I'm not sure I buy into it always needing to be well, continued community input well, for our yeah. vision as a group as an organization one thing i would like to, I'm just, to bring up on behalf of the superintendent is i know that she is setting up uh, her superintendent advisory councils ones of um, parents ones of students that might be a venue might to be. share yeah, and, sure. and get community yeah. feedback as we do yeah. the revision process because she's going to probably go over our notes and what we do here and absolutely I'll, she'll I'll, have I'll right. input right. too right. Exactly. Um, we're not set in stone no. quite yet no I think basically our goal is to fix the blatant things right. that need exactly. to be changed I don't mean no community input Bev yeah. I, I'm remembering that whole community deal and how they came about the participants, which I did not agree with. But that was all because we were going to an elected board. The manual had to change. The handbook had to change. Um, but I'm thinking if we are going to then change that again, that we we do need their input. We represent well, them. We, we need their concerns. They hate when we leave them out of... of major things like but where we're going I, I don't agree with not, community. Uh, uh, not for mission right. statements and visions it's I'm sorry that's an organizational about, thing but it no um, I think it's the, the core of who we are and they need of what we're doing for them but that's based on things like ESSA and innovation center issues and things that we have developed that now need to come into our vision plan and, and and on behalf of the superintendent, I, I think it is a, is a balance of new federal accountability measures right. as well as seeking input from the community. And, and that's but why that's what I'm talking her about. forums yeah. that she's started yeah. so that she yeah. can listen to the community yeah. right. and right. be able to seek input where I can see 
if the mission and vision change, those are outlets among others that this information would be shared. I, I think there's a balance of both. Oh, great. Um, that, that has I'm to I'm not happen. saying only the community yeah, tells yeah, us what I, to I, do, but I get it. they need to feel like they're part of it because they are. They should be. So I but also again, want to make a note for, to review this with the superintendent yeah. and get yes. her feelings. Because if she's idea. developed her groups. That's fine. That's fine. So is that input. sufficient as community input? Or are we talking about going out and having 49,000 uh, 49, <laughs> input points? Well, I, I, in one way, though, I agree that, I mean, community and our students, our parents are the most vested individuals in our county. Sure. So, so sure. that should definitely reflect that. And if, however she gains that, right, it, it should come from or um, go hand in hand with 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 both I mean if I wasn't on this board and just a parent I yeah. might yeah. say well that mission statement doesn't reflect what I want and, right. or vice versa right so yeah. I, I don't think it's a bad thing maybe that's something too that would go out as a read is that something that as we develop it's that, not a policy no it's mm -hmm. not I don't know I don't know how how wide open I mean, we most want mission to be. statements are pretty um, you know, they kind of cover the bases. Yeah. So, so you're, not, you're never going to come up with a mission statement that it is going to probably hold a negative connotation to it. Right. So, right. so there, uh, because this is really all about strategic planning, uh, Innovation Center Team 1 will be bringing you a policy uh, that clearly outlines our strategic planning process for your review. Okay. And that's so probably yes. where we base our <coughs> core. If you want, you know, if there's additional things that you would like to see added in that. Yes, Ms. Call. Will that in input um, do, do how how we're measuring if we're reflecting what's here, the, the input that you're saying that you'll give to us? Um, how do we measure if we're meeting these goals, or how are we measuring if we're in line with this mission statement? Is that sure? And and, and one of the things, and and that where this is currently out of alignment in goal one, we had changed that from high student achievement to. Um, student performance and we've we used to have 60 about 59 indicators that looked at different ways in which we gauged or measured academic performance we've recalibrated those and and uh, eliminated those down to about 20 indicators uh, some of that based on the, the college and career readiness standards the park assessments if you will uh, those are going to have to be revised again once we better understand the new federal laws mandates of accountability so that's one of the things we're looking at right now which is not only academic performance how we look at safe schools mm -hmm. um, if you remember I think the last board meeting we looked at attendance uh, all of those are factors that we look at to gauge whether or not we're moving in, in the right direction. So I know the superintendent wants to take a good hard look at all of that and realign that, mm -hmm. and which she'll come back to you for Is a uh, suggestion for on these altars. Okay. Yes. Uh, and when will we hear about that? So in, in, in the fall, I'm in the fall, in the spring, um, we will provide an update to the board on the uh, ESSA accountability measures so that you will have a little bit of an understanding. We're right now just gaining awareness as a school system. Uh, the uh, Maryland State Department of Education has, has put the state plan to the federal government. They've gotten feedback. Uh, the last state meeting I was in on Friday was trying to figure out how is this going to work? What does this actually mean to local school systems? Yeah. So once that gets a little bit more clear, uh, then we'll come back to the board and make sure once we've got the information right that you have the information. That information is going to certainly feed into our long-term strategic planning and our strategic goals and then get into the measures in which we're going to be able to do that. Okay. The last thing I'll add is, is that the last board meeting, then the superintendent talked about her goals. Um, and those goals will have to align to these and right. our goals. So it's all a, mm -hmm. a nice big Rubik's Cube that we're trying to put together. It's a huge job. Thank you, Greg. I don't want to slow down the meeting with these kind of questions. No, no, that's, that's, you know, no absolutely not. Yeah, that's a good question because up to this point, I, mean, I don't recall us you know, actually being briefed on how we're meeting these goals uh -huh. in all the years I've been on the board. So uh -huh. that's, that's a, a great, it is a great question. Yeah. yeah. 
And so I know that's just the last piece of that. That's one of the things that we've tried to do uh, in the last six months is provide the board with a update on each one of our current goals. And so the last board meeting, we've gone through this, this fall, uh, goal one, goal two, goal three, and goal four. Um, Which are different from these yes, five. five. Because yes. these, hasn't, these haven't yes. been revised right. for some time. Right. And so those two things just have to come into alignment to one another. Like what your measuring tools are right. and your base. So there's exactly. several parts to this section. Very, yes. very much. When you align that to the superintendent's goals, that, that will then give us um, a venue to, to evaluate her performance too and so it all that's a good idea that falls together absolutely and that's one of the things that, that we're working that she's working on with us is ensuring that there are metrics from within those goals mm -hmm. so that at the end of the year she can present to you here's what my goals are and here's what the metrics we've used where have we made progress so that it's clear to you based upon how you're measuring Thank you, Greg. good question Carrie Thank you. Was there any um, other questions um, in this section here? Um, because I don't clearly have states anymore. board candidates, members elect. We didn't know we were going to do this vacancy and all this thing this year, Miss Carey. So, <laughs> yeah. but here it is. <laughs> um, the oath, the swearing in, um, student representatives, how that's done, um, and then each student as they sit on the board um what they what they have to uh do also um any questions in in that section of it i'm fine everybody's questions answered that well it's uh 12:03, so we're going to take a break at this time and we will be back at um uh, and we'll be back at 1245. Welcome back. We will continue reviewing the board handbook. Uh, we left where we left uh, at Code of Ethics. Um, did anybody have any questions about this? I'm good. I'm good. Are we going to do something about student board member you talked about when we were in That is uh, a little... Oh, was that? Was right before. Actually, it was on page uh, it was right 22. There. <clears throat> um, do you want to go back there? Well, I said, were you going to change something? And I know I overheard you listen to Well, actually, that. it's not changed. It's, it's something that's already there supposed to. Go ahead, Craig. You. Yeah, it, uh, it was just, a, uh, <coughs> I think, a recommendation as I was learning about the process of when the new uh, student board members are elected. Uh, it might be a good idea, and it's it's really has nothing to do with with it's more procedural and that is just maybe recognizing that the last student the, our board meeting where there's a student member and it's our last meeting that we we always recognize them but it would be good to maybe introduce the new, the new members even though they're not going to start until uh, July and I think one of the things and I'll brief the superintendent on that Typically, the May meeting is the last meeting because they're they're seniors. But according to this, they, they really need to be too. through June. They can be so a junior too. We'll then. make sure uh, that that we communicate that uh, to them so they understand. They'll start the first July meeting. They will need to be there in the summer. Uh, certainly, part of the expectation. I think, I mean, we need to think about that because if you're if you're going to introduce a new, well, I don't care about that one as much, but. You know, in June, they're doing their senior week, and we're going to interfere with all that. No, he said May, them. and then he mm -mm. said June. They're supposed to. They're supposed to be here from July first until June thirtieth. Oh, the same that we follow, so that and they should be coming through. Been doing that. No, I'm we not haven't. Sure we want to do that to them. I'm not sure either. I don't think that's Give them fair. June that might dissuade a good candidate from right. not doing it. Yeah, that's what I'm concerned that was about. The obligation. Darren, uh, the discussion we're having is the term of the student board member and when they should start and when they should uh, conclude their their term. Right. Um, I know you work with a lot of other jurisdictions. Anything that prohibits, and I think some of the concern is just if you're a senior, then there's you, know, you got graduation that's coming up. You've got all those items, uh, but this clearly does state from could July. We could it says it right here. Well, that's the, but that's, I think that's the law. I mean, remember, remember you have a board um, a year 
that is a July 1st to June 30th year. You have board cycles that generally work exactly. that way. You have um, the academic year. Yeah, and 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 without having the statute straight in front of me, let's if in fact it says the student, if the statute says the student serves July to June, then you're not going to be able to change that through your handbook. Mm -hmm. The one thing you can do, though, of course, is you don't have to. You don't have to say that somehow a student who fails to be at the June one because they have conflicts relating to their senior right. in their activities, right. you know, so they've ahead. done something wrong. I think what you do is let them know as, as early as possible what that June date is. Yes. Have them communicate with you if it is going to run into a conflict with graduation or other related ceremonies. And then the idea, too, of prior to July, having the new selectees, because they're not yet board members till July, having them come to, in some way, some, some meeting before the July meeting where they're really going to start, and have them see any ceremony you might do or any acknowledgement of the students. I mean, you could do that in May if your I May meeting so was too. right. I just the don't know enough The new one come and visit, calendar. the old one get their recognition. Right. Nothing says they have to attend every meeting. So if we don't do any change here and they miss the June meeting because it's understood they've got so much going on, yeah. I don't think we're in arrears of that one year of service. No, no, that's not the issue. We can't yeah. all attend every meeting and the, and the juniors may have scheduled items in May. Yeah. And I think I think the yeah. key is communication that a yeah. the newest student board members know what the calendar yeah. is right. as fast as possible yeah. all the way into June yeah. and that they know the plan would be for your the newest members of the following year that they be brought yeah. to 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 see how things go to 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 and, see and even mean, to be introduced and then introduced right. again when they start their term exactly right. and, yeah. and I don't have I mean May or, but when would they normally know the stu the newest student members May. It would Something. probably be by May because they're getting ready to graduate, you know. No, they're no the newest in ones. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna. I think it's March that or that April. It, it's because okay, so if they know yeah. by March or April, there that gives you the leeway of a couple months to have right. that transfer. Even though again, they can't take right. their position until right. July. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I have yeah, exactly. Make sure we weren't so I'm kind of fine no, leaving it the way it is. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's the law. The law is the law. I mean, it states that. So. And, and again, we may run into the same thing we ran into with Grace. She was gone for a whole month. Yeah. That that didn't preclude preclude her, thankfully, no. for no, no, applying no, no. and winning and us getting her. Absolutely. But she not. did a very worthy trip, and so be it. Right. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. So, code of ethics. I don't think that there was, was any that. question with that one. Um, the ethics panel. Was there some, we, something? We didn't do that. Something with the, the ethics panel, it says we limited to serve two consecutive terms. Um, when do we do an ethics panel? We, we, we have, have never done it. We, have, we have one, we but we shouldn't. We are so late in getting that a new one in. We We've need never had people. a new we one as far as I remember. We have the same people right. all the time, and yeah, we need to work on that. I have that noted. Well, where does it say that's our duty well, to do, to duty. develop the ethics panel? Well. <clears throat> We should have an ethics panel. I don't see anywhere where it says the Board of Ed chooses those people. Then there's, why is it in our there's handbook? Nobody I mean, we, we, it, why does it need them. to be in our handbook then? There's nobody picking them. Um. We're required to have an ethics panel. It doesn't say we're required to develop well, it ourselves. Right, but it says devise, receive, and maintain all forms of genera uh, generated by the ethics That's what the policy ethics panel and all that does. stuff. But, I mean, if, if it's not controlled by us, why is it even in our handbook it, then? It, it is. It's you you just eliminate it. And I was like, who are these people? Like, yeah, where is this a county function? Is this a board of ed function? Like, who, who does? Who, who does? It the, is, it's, we have in, a in list. All, in they're, almost every they're county. They're on our it's website. A, we have a list. Board it's, of Education function. It is a board of education. It, usually there's board of education policy that folks have to comply with. For the most part, it's the disclosure of gifts right, and right, potential right, right. conflicts. And the main function of the ethics panel, unless asked from time to time, is, they, is to look at those forms. I think isn't it isn't it how it's like most boards and panels they submit something to like you put an ad out say we need members for this yes, panel that's like how they, it's they, done. they they submit paper. like a application for it you review it you and pick you, your people and you all, and, and you all and you all choose it. I mean most right. most boards populate their ethics. We have not panel. done we that. We even know in, who any, sits on the ethics. I do. Panels. It's on the website. There's the, their names are all listed. We should know. Um, <laughs> 
We do know they live in Queen Anne's County. It is, <laughs> it is yeah. not unheard of. Is not that we do know. <laughs> yeah. It's not unheard of for boards over time to to find out either because they happen to look at dates or because one of the panel members says, "I'm finished." <laughs> You know, yeah. to, fi- to find out that Natalie yeah. Vini's yeah. one. I think somebody. Natalie Vini's one of them. Elsie it's Lawrence. not unusual yes. to find out you've run past Suzanne the three years. Henley Suzanne Henley is Lawrence. the attorney. Suzanne, Suzanne Henley was the one who had them. But she was the one advisor. One. Oh, legal Nicholas advisor Judas. Yes, yes. But they exist. Natty. Um, <coughs> V- yep, they're all there on the website. Yeah. I, saw, I just saw it, but I don't even know who I mean, do all the what you, Here's what you have to do. Well, you have to, to find out how long each is served. Okay. Find out who's come to the end of what is at least for now your policy, which okay. is the three years. It's probably also in policy somewhere. Well, and for those folks years. who have overstayed <coughs> the three years, I think you have to ask them, just have somebody communicate with them. Are you interested in okay. staying on? If not, we're looking for candidates. But, I would say they've all been says, at least six years. Wow. Well, I'm going to say, never and maybe, is it, am I reading wrong? Like, each member serves for a term of three years. Should they have to reapply to be on it and able, in order yes. to get other new um candidates or they, if they, they say no no we want to stay on and no then no we just forget i wouldn't about allow it. that i'd make them reapply yeah, i think so too. because it says they can only do two consecutive right but they should apply for both of those right. terms I think so, and yeah. then they can skip one and come back if they choose to god forbid right. why who, they would um, yeah, but who anyway. should who should do that who's, i think whose responsibility should do is that? that the attorney that well, I think ultimately you I think Dr. Kane's got to initiate yeah. I think that. the superintendent, as, as, okay. your, as the Dr. body Kane secretary, should. can get the process going. I think you all are selecting the, okay. your, your, your panel. But Dr. Kane is actually should contact Suzanne Henley. Right. Uh, well, Suzanne Henley, I think what she's there for is so that you have, you or ha, was there for, I mean, she was also giving advice to the board. She was there to provide advice to the ethics panel right. on issues such as so-and-so gave us a form that said they received a $500 gift from someone who's a current vendor. What do we do with it? <coughs> I mean, uh, she was kind of like the liaison, too. If you had an ethics complaint, it went to her, and then she submitted it to the to the panel. And she did all the paperwork and charged a lot of money. I, yeah, I... I don't think you all are, I'm not sure why that, I'm not sure any of that's necessary. Can you check into that for us, please? Yes, I will. <laughs> I think we'll, how about, and how about I maybe brief you all on maybe similar practice, similar. Okay, let's like do What that. we used to do and what we probably okay. want to do. Yes. <laughs> can, but can we'll do I, that can at in the next meantime, meeting or? can somebody reach out to your current members, you know, through the superintendent's office and simply get a handle on the roster, current addresses, <coughs> you know, last time they met, and when they began serving, I just think we want to have. I do. Un- I do, do know you have to do that do by that? phone okay. call because um, several of them do not use computers. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I heard that they didn't even have computer right. access. Right. Well, yeah, Greg is going to oh, take oh, care oh, of that. So. Okay. He's going to reach out and take care of okay. that. So. Yeah. Yeah. It would have to be done through <coughs> the phone. It's not like mail. they're sitting in an office here and we can just go grab them. But again, it's not unusual to sort of have to reinvigorate, if that's the right word, yeah. or reboot ethics the ethics panel because right. sometimes there aren't enough things happening right. but remember they do have that they, they have that job every year to take a look at the disclosure forms uh-huh. you know for that alone oh, someone okay. needs to our be, financial disclosures um all, all, the, the all forms. sort of an upper level staff I mean, lack of a better description mm-hmm. 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 Um, okay. wouldn't be that's surprised fine. if no one has done that and that's why i'm years. saying this is a need to reboot and it mm-hmm. should start mm-hmm. first and foremost with all right. are you folks out there what was it three I think it's three. three of them, yeah. Three, yes. Out there, are you still interested? When did you begin? Because, again, if, as long as they're at the end of the second term or the first term, it's fairly clean. If someone's in their seventh year or eighth yeah. year, under your own handbook, it's sort of past their time. Right. And Especially you, if they didn't do a reapplication <laughs> and they just carried or, on. Or they, didn't, or, they didn't, so. or, they, or they just simply haven't done anything and their position hadn't been right. filled. Right, right. All right. You do I'm have a policy. Greg's going to reach uh, out to them, and we'll hear. Yes. Unnumbered, as you know, right now, but there is a code of ethics policy that cross-references the panel. It consists of three members appointed by the board for, are you ready for this, a three-year term. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily say whether they can re-up. But Two consecutive. Right. I'm, I'm reading, poli- no, I'm reading your policy. Oh, gotcha. I'm gotcha. reading what's on your on your website. Oh, gotcha. Um, <laughs> what are you? On but the why but, are we but see where see your bullets that say devise, receive, and yes. maintain. Mm-hmm. That's all repeated in in the policy. Okay. okay. Um, there's five bullets there. Okay. And then it goes into the whole thing of you know what are conflicts of interest. Uh, you know why do they have to be disclosed? Okay. 
It's uh, just so you know. So the biggest point of difference is two-year consecutive in here and not on No, it's just not referenced as two. But just so you know, there are 14 pages to your ethics policy. Wow. Really? Probably based on, on, other, on, on, on what's done in most places. Somebody else, yeah. So, so even if they're not that active, they certainly ha are charged with a fairly significant responsibility. Right. And from time to time, there can be, I mean, there can be a complaint against a board member. There can be played against a staff volunteer. member. Volunteer. It's all volunteer. There's no pay to them. They, so. Exactly. Okay, so we're, you'll, we'll all catch up on that, though. Yep, in progress. All right, so then we're at the appointment of the county superintendents of schools. Um. Bless you. <laughs> it was very silent. It was very silent. <laughs> Responsibilities and duties of the superintendent of schools is page 27. That, unless that's by law, written out there by law, that's, that might have to be changed based on what. Mm -hmm. All right, well, down is her goals and her <clears throat> um, I was under a complete misunderstanding about some of this. I was not aware that ever were we kind of consulted or anything run by us about administrative and supervisory hirings, but this says that in advance of a transfer of an administrative or supervisory personnel, the board would be informed. I did not know that, so I've been very guilty of saying, gosh, we never had anything to do with that. I'm okay with her making her choice and announcing it in the HR report, and we That's approve it. That's kind of the reason it's why kind of not we did the other. It's kind of not like that, according right. to this. So um, I think we need to discuss, do we want to to be a part of that process, how in it we want to be. Uh, do we want to have a yay or a nay on a certain person for a certain reason? Um, I'm a little unclear as to how that all did get convoluted because the, bo the book is pretty specific, but I never what is it called? realized is that Comar we were a part of that. Is there a Comar I said in my campaign. Uh, oh, this is if the best way to describe this. Uh, Captain Kelly is, exactly. this is from a bunch exactly. of different places, and plus said, overlay of the board's own preferences. This is not, all, you would never find all this in one spot. Well, how about the responsibility of, personnel responsibility of well, administrative? Right. There's at least, I can think of at least two spots in the education article where the superintendent's duties in that regard are spelled out, but, but none of this is, some of this is verbatim, some of it's not. Yeah, I think before we decide on it, we really need to see if that's the, in Comar. Um, oh, that that's their divine can we not look that up right now responsibility the last item we're talking about yeah yeah bullet. I mean I, I'm just gonna say that I have said many 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 times to many 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 people we are only responsible for hiring and firing a superintendent not staff well, well I'm wrong really basically the whole point of, of the review of of uh, uh, professional hires is ultimately you end up in your public sessions approving them. There's a difference between though notifying you in advance if that's what you're asking in here. Oh, that's you know what? This, it's somewhere issue. else in this manual. It's somewhere else in here too. I believe it's somewhere else. Is I it, need is to it look. Bullet number three. Is that what you're looking at? Um, I'm actually looking at that last. But look at number three. Informed it's all the same as the last one. Yes, it's informs the board of. in advance of administrative reorganizations, including transfers, functions, establishment of positions, offices. And consolidation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we've never done that. Yes, we right, have. Right, but I mean, yes, informing we we is different than approving. Report. Right, right. That's the HR approving. report. Chair. When all of those principles got moved at the end of the year, were you consulted on that? Were you no, informed, we were informed of that? We were informed. After well, that's the two different, two, term of art. Informed is not consultant. Informed right. is not seeking right. approval. Right. Informed right. simply means you'll be notified in, in advance. advance. That's it. I mean, right. I'm right. saying we got a letter, confer, though, consult, not an email that's Everybody, saying who was moving where. where. Right. Yeah. In and did we that, this year? In advance of them moving, of them actually moving. Did we this year too on our our moves? I, I can't remember I every time, don't. but I do remember that one because that was such an upheaval of, of things going on. All right, well. I think we were notified this year. I'm pretty sure about that. I mean, would, would in closed that. session be considered informing us? Yeah, that's the, the HR report. That's, that's, the that's not that's in advance. That's not in advance. Well, yes, it is. It hadn't moved yet. Because you get your HR report on Friday before right. the meeting. 
and, and, and in point of order for those positions that require board approval under statute, that happens in the meeting. It doesn't right. have to happen. You right. vote on it. We don't have to approve the HR report. Exactly right. But you get your HR report on Friday, so you are you, know, you are given advance notice of any changes. Now I would hate to see it come down to that. And then you can bring it up when we come frame. to the meeting, and if you choose not to to um, approve the HR report, then that's that's where it's at. But we have asked that in advance of and they have been major chances, uh, changes, right. they, have and they have been doing that. We have been following that. Yes. That. Does yes. this yes. continue, though, positions. and if we, do, we disagree with the assignment of somebody as a principal, other than saying well, we don't approve the HR report. See if here, we it is. have a majority. It's still is this still the majority? Is I don't think she can from I think, getting the job. Yeah, I think you can. Okay, All right. I, I think it would be a hold on, like a hold on it. But here's the thing: you would have to come up with a really a very very solid right. legal where it couldn't be. You know, you you got to know something big that would stop that move because we don't have the power to do that right. except yeah. for. In if we know knowledge of something that maybe the superintendent or yeah. somebody didn't okay. know, but it would have to be pretty, pretty solid. Okay. And then, like, all we right, just so don't, we just look don't at the, the next to last the HR one. report. I mean, recommends the appointment of administrative and supervisory personnel to the Board of Education for its approval. Where are you at? Where's that? The, the next, next to the last one. Oh, next to the last one. one. Okay. Whether oh, okay. by discrete personnel action or by way of a monthly report. So okay, so we do get our monthly report. Our report. Yes. So that is every principal. And but every usually, when we get our HR report, they have already been offered their position. I mean, are so we? So it would be uh, very well, difficult. I've, to I've, brought, that I've made that. Yeah. I, yeah. I've, I've been making that comment for years. As in, uh, if you I already hired them, we why are we approving it? I didn't think we had anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's in here. My question is: Is this legal for us to do that? Are we allowed? Here's the statute that's operative with respect to the appointment of and I'm and I'm sticking with for the purpose of the discussion what I believe everybody's focused on here which is the professional personnel i.e. the certificated personnel either in teacher roles or administrative roles not teacher not teacher administrative or supervisor I mean I'm, I'm sorry upper I'm, echelon I'm sorry I meant to say assistant team. principal principal mm -hmm. and central office roles yeah. I, that's what yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah. in my head yeah for the, it says right here in 6-201 except as provided in another section, the county superintendent shall nominate for appointment by the county board all professional assistants of the office of superintendent. That's the assistant superintendents, the, the you know anybody in that sort of higher level uh, position in the superintendent's office. All principals, teachers, and other certificated personnel. Oh, I'll be darned. As, we to, didn't the, have it all like as to the personnel, again, this is the key in the statute. As to these personnel. The county superintendent shall assign them to their positions in the schools, transfer them as the needs of the schools require, recommend them for promotion. Again, there's a distinction. Assigning and transferring does not require any action by the board. Promoting, and I'm fine with that, actually. Promoting, promoting people does and hiring people does. Wow. The way it works in practice, and this is not all unusual, is at some point prior to a meeting in which that list of changes and remember it's broken down right right you ever notice right. it's broken down in those different categories there's mm -hmm. a reason for that but the categories are treated differently mm -hmm. so for instance where it says so and so is being moved from this ap job to this ap job for instance that's not subject to board approval right it's on the report and you can vote to accept it or right. not but there's other parts of the report that are subject to a board vote Right, and I've made this, this is where I've made an argument for, since I've been on here, is that superintendents hiring people, telling them they're hired, and then coming to us for approval. I have said we're, we're putting the cart before the horse. We should say this is who I'm recommending to be hired, seek your approval, then you offer the And the, the communication job. should have a, conting yeah. they should have contingency language in it. Because otherwise, what's the point of us the approving HR the HR report if it's already been done? And the way you and, get and a... And you're right, and you mm -hmm. have said that. Practically speaking, the way you get through the reality of, hey, we're missing someone in this area of critical need, is you hire people on an interim basis or on a contract basis to cover some right. serious need subject to your and final they, hire. 
that's pending how it's HR done. approval by the board, I, I suppose. And if you make an offer to somebody, it's contingent upon. And like I said, normally it would be approved because unless we would have any inside information that the superintendent exactly. would not have been privy to. Sure. There's really we not would have any to trust. To that's why she is in that. That's position. exactly right. But right. that's to, exactly to go right. back However, to your handbook, okay? Yeah. Because it's too. You don't want to mix the apples and oranges here. The question about your handbook is this responsibilities and duties of superintendent of schools. As I answered, I think it was Captain Kelly's question. This thing is not a recitation of law, nor is it a recitation of everything outside the law. It's sort of a whole mix. And it clearly reflects what a board or boards in the past wanted in this handbook. So when you read in the third bullet, informs the board in advance of administrative reorganizations, including transfers of functions, establishment of positions and offices, consolidation of positions and offices. That means what it says. It says informs in advance. It doesn't say ask, ask your permission or, opinion, or, or it ask says you should know solution. in advance. Right. But then you go to, where's that other one, uh, Greg? Is it down towards Extended the bottom, last. right? <clears throat> towards the bottom? Well, the, the very next last, last one informs and the board. Well, okay, no, but there's a second one. It says recommends an appointment yes. of administrative and supervisor personnel of the Board of Education, okay? Uh, for its approval, whether by personnel actions or a monthly personnel report. Again, that's a recommendation. So, of course, that's in advance. Right. And it is subject to board approval. Sure. Why? Because it's appointment. That goes back to the language, exactly. which says, shall nominate for appointment those professional assistants and all principal teachers. But then what's the next bullet? Informs in advance of the transfers. That is also consistent. So it's not that this is inconsistent with stat statute. It's that it's a mix. Oh. You just have to look closely at the words. Someone chose recommends because it, it works with the statute. Someone chose informs because for that part, it works. works with the statute. And there is a difference. I recommend we um, clarify in here what administrative and supervisory is. Just be real specific. Because it's saying, you're saying the law says teachers too. Well, no, two different, right. cate two different categories. Would be the this is our. But where we have teachers, I think we ought to clarify. I don't specifically. I don't think we should include teachers in this at all. I don't. Just know as it is. Law we have to. No, we don't. No, not, we don't. No, he, he, he just clarified. Yeah. That's the law. This is our guideline. I know. We're not breaking the law no, that's by I mean. not including the teachers. Well, I don't, I'm confused. Am, and, am I misunderstanding, this, Derek? It, here's the statute. Yes, yeah. thank it's you. a dissertation of the law. The county superintendent shall nominate, i.e. recommend, for appointment by the county board the following. All professional assistants of the office of the county superintendent. So that's going to be the folks that occupy the central okay. office. That's part one. And two, all principals, teachers, and other certificated personnel. So when you get a report prior to the school year yeah. recommending hired, hiring of teachers and principals, and that's by that's law. It. And she's covered. She's done what she was supposed to do. And, and that is for your approval. I yes. mean, technically, yes. the last line could just say, in advance of transfers of personnel. I mean, because it pretty much covers True. everything, not True. just those two. And then the one above that. Well, that's again informs in advance right. of transfers. Yeah. Remember, transfers is completely that's all different. That's personnel. That's completely transfers different. Is completely different. That. different yes. than that's hiring. hiring. Right. Yes. Hiring. Completely. Yes. Different. Talking about the recommendations, I just think we should be specific. It's, and, and this gets to your point about transfers, which also involves reorganizations. Yes. Right. Superintendent has the authority, and I believe, if I recall back in my contract, it clearly states that in the superintendent's contract that they have the authority to reorganize. That's exactly why both of them say inform here. Mm -hmm. But as long as they're if what you're doing, let's just say you're going to move three principals around to three different schools, and in the process there's also an AP who's resigned or retired. In the process of reorganizing, you also have to hire somebody. That hire is a different, different thing category. than a reorganization or yes, a transfer. Right. Yes, it's not merely an inform. It's actually got to be you are requesting approval. Okay. And and it may I think the reports are broken out this way. They are. I really do think they that they yeah. they meet the statute. The question is how much do you really want in your handbook that's not already in statute? And if you want it in your handbook, do you want it in all this detail or you want something different? I mean that's kinda of where you are. There's nothing But yeah, I'm I mean I'm fine with it how it is, but I was just that was my only I think where we say recommends the appointment of administrative and next to the last bullet. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
that when we say administrative and supervisory, administrative is principals, supervisory is is Greg and Sid, and that's it. Executive as team. Well, executive it's team. Not just them. But it isn't. Curriculum supervisors. Yeah, right, right, right. Oh, right. Okay. So I think we, it's a little confused. We don't have teacher in there. We have to put teacher in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. tiring. That's right. hiring. Recommend the appointment of. We don't recommend the appointment uh -uh. of teachers. Uh uh. For our approval. No, this is the superintendent. This the is about the superintendent. He's recommending to us for approval the appointment of teacher, te the hiring of teachers. It says mm -hmm. in the statute. That's what I mean. We're confused here. No. no I just don't think it's covered really? here. That's all. It's not. It's not broken out. No, it's I'm not. not sure it's the, I'm it. saying the recommendation. The, the, Sometimes the if we teachers get it aren't too here. clear, yeah, it's too catching us in too well, many caveats. Appointment of personnel. Just take out administrative and supervi supervisor. Would you like, yeah. since one of the things that we're going to do from this, and I want to clarify it too, just so you all know, because I, I actually, unfortunately, won't be able to state the duration of the meeting. I had mentioned to the president that what I thought we would do when this is done is as you make whatever hand edits you make is obviously I've got to update the statutes, update the references of statutes. One thing I could do if you'd like me to is on this page where there is language in the statute that could be substituted for what's yes. here. A good idea. Do some, or simply yes. at least the sake of discussion. Yes. Yes. Make yes. that yes. substitution. Yes. Include it here and then you kind of roll with it. it from there and you'll see it yeah. where it fits. Perfect. A lot of these are definitely just a blend mm -hmm. but yeah. but but I would agree that right now what's in here would does not include verbatim what's in mm -hmm. the statute right mm -hmm. okay okay that, okay. I think that works sounds good. on the yep. next circulation mm -hmm. draft that's, great. that's fine All right. okay so we're okay so additional responsibilities all right the one thing that stood out to me is something that I don't remember us ever doing the board of uh, under meetings with public bodies and legislative delegation the Board of Education and the Board of County Commissioners generally meet annually on a joint developed calendar day we have not done that. and the Board of Education will host a meeting of the elected members of the Queen Anne's County delegation of the Maryland State Legislature we have not done that either well, I guess generally the meeting between us and the county you could could include could that. include when yes. we go to the county meeting for the budget I mean, uh, right? no, that, no, that, he's given or she's giving a budget presentation. We're just there for support. They sit at their table. They do what we're I've doing. We asked, sit back there. I've already asked oh, okay. her to ask the county we, commissioners to, um, we to have can a go. sit down. Yes, absolutely. We can go. We can but sit yeah, at a we round need, table. They we can need come here that, or we can go over there. And then we need all oh, your state delegates to have some kind of annual fall meeting. It specifically says in the fall of the year. The meeting will be held with the Maryland delegation, meaning people like Arntz, mm -hmm. Arntz and, and those four guys, Hershey, Hershey, Hershey Grace, uh, yes, and probably the commissioners too, but maybe not. I don't know. We've neither done, we've done neither that I, since I've been here. Can I ask, is, is this something that, that past boards just put in this handbook or is this something that is a general practice across the state? Probably something past boards put in here. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would guess, the, the but there could be I counties just, that do I, it. I, 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 it Maybe all the Eastern Shore counties do it. I don't know. It is done by several of them on my legislative okay. committee. Some of the bigger counties, they do it all the time. They meet with their delegates, okay. and they they discuss the upcoming um, legislative issues. That yeah, that's why the timing, I think, is the right, way it is in fall. here. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Okay. There's no requirement. Well, we're working on the county commissioners, so we'd okay. like to have a meeting with them before okay. we um, actually sit down to do before um, if the I budget to, presentation goes to them you mean dr keen um i'll reach out to the county commissioners as the president to see if we can invite them to a to okay. a open meeting sometime maybe round in table. january just a round table we can do it here or we can do it over there okay. we might have to do that in the evening sure um so but um i'll be more than happy to reach out and see if um now that wouldn't have to be open to the public would it yes. or would yes. it be yeah, yes. It yes okay then we have to start thinking about well, we'll just advertise it, but the mm -hmm. round table yeah. would just yeah. be the county commissioners. Yep. It would be a, it would be so like there's really there two sessions things and non-speaking, they yeah. may come, yeah. but, you know. There's um, two items here. Yeah, so. Um, Clearly. Gotcha. I can reach out to both of them if you'd like for me to. I could reach out to. Well, um, the one says held in the fall. Parents. I don't know if we want to stick well, to that. We're not going to be able do to do that, do that because they're getting ready to go back into session. And that's why I was thinking maybe just even remove that in the fall annually leave that in sometime during the yeah. year you would like to meet with your Mel maryland delegation group it does not have to be in the fall no, i don't think so either so that would be a change that maybe i would recommend men taking Just out a fall. time frame we've got a whole yeah. 12 months it's a collaboration is what Just it do is annually oh, yes 
And yes. we can pick, but fall is, is recommended, before the session is recommended. So they can defend things that we think are important. And, uh, and there are uh, upcoming, there are, yeah, that's true, that's there true. Are, um, upcoming legislative issues. A lot issues. of the mm -hmm. county, the, the, big, the counties, a lot of them have um, their own legislative items they want mm -hmm. them to put forward. Mm -hmm. and right. And if we right. have something, we may want to do this before mm -hmm. the fall. Yeah, you're right, you're right. So maybe leave it as it is. Yeah. Just leave it as it is. But be cognizant that we've never that done it and we probably should. And that we need to get it mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My question was just how often does the Board of Education ask the state um, legislators to be looking at sponsoring a bill or like what is the the involvement of the Board of Education with the um, the General Assembly session? Like does that is that a big deal every year where we're like, hey, we got an interest in this and that? And we want you to we, we I think they do that through May. That's the board of education. They set out like their platform sort of for that session. Yes. And then we Beverly attends a lot of the legislative yes. committee this stuff. Mabe's thing, but this, these are the items relevant to us here in Queen Anne's we, County. We, and this is what we want you to take a look maybe, at as our reps. Last year, I think we did submit one for ourselves. I'm trying right. to remember. They'll generally, but, Kara, they will generally get that. And it's actually a pretty good both pre and post legislative session write up that they do. Mabe does a good job with it. And they'll ice you but you might think, why in the world? I wouldn't even think that bill would apply to schools, and yet they're good at yeah. picking that out. But if they get you the word early, they'll they'll either just ask for comment, ask you to support the position mm -hmm. of either Bazam or Mave, or like Beth said, if there's a time when you want to chime in on something, you chime in, and Mabel Mabel carry that ball. And once in a while, they'll ask folks to attend. They'll they'll raise their hands and say, hey. Get on down here. Uh -huh. They're trying to the take out and teacher and appeals and let them be handled right. by AAA. We want you down here to testify. So, you know, right. depending, it's, uh, Mabe carries the ball pretty well, mm -hmm. but they'll call on this board, or you may identify something and ask them, please. Um, I know Pazam will do it great. If a super, an individual superintendent calls Renee Spence at, Span, at Pazam and says, we have concerns about this bill. Absolutely. She it's, will it's, work uh, with that school system and see if it, others may feel the same way. And in their, their monthly meetings, this is a constant, right. you know, they get a constant update on proposed legislation. And right. If Pazam takes a stance as a superintendent organization on particular pieces of legislation, superintendents also uh, oh, okay. have a delegation day where they go and right. meet with a delegation mm -hmm. of the Eastern Shore or mm -hmm. in Annapolis. I think superintendent was just there last month. Because there's pre-filed, I mean, we know some of the bills. I mean, they're pre-filed at least. In February, which the... Everyone never, never attends, but it's a good thing to go to. In February is a luncheon that is held at, in Annapolis. And mo most of the counties, all of their boards, their entire board attends. And that is when the legislators come to the lunch, too, and you have a chance to interact with them. They sit at the same table with you. And that gives you another opportunity to, to really push right right when this, this, the session is beginning. That's probably why it's set up that way, I would yep. It is, yeah. And you and can so keep us informed will, on that. Yeah, is. Great. sure. Perfect. Oh, well, it's already set. I'll have to uh -huh. get it off to you. Uh -huh. So that's a good place to... Who receives MAVE's in, on, for this board? Does anybody receive MAVE's, uh, MAVE's um, various transmittals and missives and memos? Is I think it, it depends on what it is, okay. which part of MAVE it comes out of, okay. and where someone might be involved. I believe Beverly probably gets legislative items Just and things there, like that. It's on their website, but I think the superintendent gets... Yeah, because I, I think what you would do as a board is maybe say, that, hey, when because now we're getting into the, into the season, um, when those things are issued, you as a board should ask to receive copies of them. Well, I always try to send anything I get from Mabe forward to sure, everybody, sure. not knowing whether they got it or not. Right. If I went to a budget meeting and they say, hey, the director's cleared the budget, yeah, we're go, I send that to all of them so they know. If they got it in duplicate, I apologize. I do, just like the video. And I saw Sarah and I was like, oh, man, I we got to do that. something I on never, that. I, mean, I, knew, yeah, I wasn't I sure, but I thought, I'm going to send this. Yeah. If they've already got it, that's great. But this is our student board member, and she was very right. well highlighted. I thought right. it was great. Right. We do need to mention probably that Grace was out of the country. It wasn't that she you just didn't, didn't attend. Right. You right. didn't get uh, that notice what she had then? With so, the video? Yeah. No. Uh, maybe okay. Well, we See, need I to think I'll because make sure we're we on committees. You, right, committees. That's what I think it is. Mm -hmm. We'll get it to your. Uh, they do oh, have oh, a I website. Said, I you said. Can, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, we should get you on the. the well, I think because I was on the. Um, yeah. We'll try to get you on the um, list so you get it, every board member. But you yeah. can always, and it's really they have advantageous to look at the Ma Ma Mabe website periodically to see what's going on throughout the throughout the state. 
it's um, all, anyway, I always forward to you guys whatever I get because I don't know if you've got it. You all, as I mentioned so, to Annette, I have a it's a, it's a counter conflict that's kind of come up over the last couple. Well, of days. I only see three or four more pages that I'm even interested in. There's nothing at the back. Um, I, I don't. I don't want to interrupt your flow. What I want to let you know. and all that. I think well, is I standard. Well, I think the only thing that, if you got a few minutes here, yep, is the appeal. Well, I was going to tell you. I looked at pages 20. Um, the following pages. Excuse me. 40. Okay. Say, I'm sorry, 56, 68, and there's one more if I just couldn't find it. Aha, uh -huh. 44, uh, 56, and 68 are each pages that deal with hearings and the setting of hearings for um, 4205, 6202, and 7305 type hearings. Um, the officers and I were talking at one point in time, and, and, and they made a good point that while you've done this calendar incorporation of when you'll do hearings it's not reflected yet in here and what I was going to suggest to you is I could uh, insert exactly the same language on those three pages okay. that deals with your setting aside hearing time I think that's that's fine. great yeah. it, you'll still From need to tell people in advance but, that, of, yeah, of right. but, <laughs> right. but I think if we do the same thing for all three types of hearing then when they're not going out the hearing examiner but being heard by you mm -hmm. right that'll cover it so right. that'll be included in the next circulation so draft. in future future um, we don't have to scatter to everybody set up a date. This is the dates. This is the times. If there's attorneys or whoever, this is when we do it. Right, just, and uh, Carrie probably doesn't know, know that, right? We talked no, about, I, did we end up in practice, although the two hearings got canceled that were set? Right. In practice, it was, we were looking at the same day as your work session, so it'd be daytime. And I think it was generally before. Before. Yes. With the idea of being able to say to folks, we have a two hour window to do right. your hearing. So the, 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 the so idea was to be able to tell appellants who say in June have submitted an appeal, the next available date is August, whatever it is, <coughs> in the morning at nine o'clock. And that allows you all to incorporate in your calendars that on the same day you do 11 o'clock meetings, reserve that earlier time, because you were talking about reserving your work calendar, mm -hmm. you'll be able to say, okay, pretty much my whole first two thirds of my day will be occupied one way or the other. And you can always, and we talked about this, if you're in the middle of a hearing and you get to your 11 o'clock hour, what you feel like in fairness to the parties, whether it's the superintendent side or the employee side or the student side, that we wanna continue this hearing and do more, you can take a break from the hearing. All right, but that brings us back to being required to have on our schedule every third Wednesday of the month a work session, which we've been discussing not doing except during budget times or if we have a specific item. But we don't have to do them if we don't have an appeal. Exactly. But if we're going to start that practice, Keep in mind, we must give cancellation notice in the previous business meeting. So that means we have to know <coughs> by the first Wednesday open meeting, 6 o'clock, that we're not going to carry out our Wednesday, third so Wednesday it meeting. Comes off of the it account. gets okay. notified. So there. we notify that night how, at the end of the evening. So we either keep it just like this and nothing changes, and we just make sure when we cancel, They've been told the Wednesday of the first monthly meet, uh, the first Wednesday of the monthly meeting, That's fine. that we're not having a Wednesday meeting. And we we didn't do have it any appeals. End. We didn't have any business to take care of. When we come we're up not with, it. when it comes to the end of the meeting, when Perfect. we do future yep. actions of the yep. month or whatever, and Perfect. meetings, and yep. if it says meeting That's on exactly there right. and it's going to be know canceled, we're not we can. I'll Perfect. check with Darren. Yep. If we have nothing, then we make it that we're not yep. going to. And that's our only obligation for right. the public is exactly. to tell them we're not having it. Exactly. It does you're get publicized through a PR. Uh, is that okay? A you're you're better that? off having this incorporated in your calendar. Exactly. Getting rid of either it if or we both have to. possible yep. events. Right. Right. And Perfect. then giving proper notice of cancellation, then scrambling exactly. to Absolutely. actually hold a session. That's why you're given 14 days notice yes. that we're canceling yes. if there's nothing on the on the um, calendar for yep. that day. Yep. I think I could like so I'll incorporate yep. that language in the next circulation okay, draft and you guys and can that see if it works. gives us still the opportunity to develop the very kind of calendar that Carrie has in front of her for a year in advance right. these are what we project as possible right. work sessions doesn't mean we're going to have them as no, long as we I notify we should, them the Wednesday before, we I don't have we to. We should always have them, and then if none of us can attend, Sharon will attend and just cancel it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> In my yellow state. sweatshirt, but I didn't wear my baseball hat. I was like, okay, you better wash this hair and get out of here. Thank you for doing that, Sharon. Um, so that actually covers that fine, okay, Darren, so page 29 and 30. Thank you for your understanding, you all. 
Thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. I, Merry I Christmas. do have Merry something. Um, they are? They are. Well, thank you. Who, who are they from? From me. Homemade breads and cookies. I like it. <laughs> thank you very much. They, we're hosting everybody, so they'll get good use. There you go. You all have great holidays. See you, right. See you there. Talk to you soon. Okay. Happy holidays. Okay. So on page 30, I just have a question about I, can we, the I was 10 days. Say, um, if anybody's got a question at this point, because I don't think just we have a whole to lot. Them. I'm Let's fine. Let's move mm -hmm. to where we need I to really be. Need, I had an appointment at 1. Okay, so now I will. I, citizen participation is not wait, intended wait, to be wait. a question. We're jumping ahead. 30. Okay. I'm on page yeah, 30. Oh, yours is 30. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. The deadline for submitting items for inclusion in the agenda is 10 days prior. I think that's unreasonable we and might have an agenda item three days in advance we ought to be able to do it as long as Jackie is working the agenda as a working document we could <coughs> add something to the agenda my understanding is right up until we meet as long as we approve the uh, agenda with I the don't change I agree with that because that's too much on Jackie um, I think that if everybody we, I'm not saying we should I'm just saying everybody 10 days sees in advance the agenda is way too long. on Friday you have until Monday morning that's great. At 9 a.m. Yeah. Turn this to three days. Then. Turn yeah. this to three days. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that, Jackie? Okay. But not the day before. Not the day before. Not the day before. And not the okay. day off. Okay. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. Now it's your turn. Annette. Well, I was just going to give you a hard time. <laughs> well. On page 31. Citizen participation I, I, is not I've intended. Got, you made a. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm going to address that. I've got. <laughs> I've got lots of notes on this page. I feel a board member should be able to ask a question if someone has misled or improperly stated an item. I'm not asking for a dialogue. Right. I'm basically clarifying one. that they have misled. But it, it clearly states when you come. Before I know quit. that it's not a I question and an answer session. If you got, or if the you public. want to, if you want to put it in writing and do it to the board member personally, that's or the to public the asking S, us a question. Then that's the way it should be done. But commissioners we, we ask questions here. when someone's in there in front of them doing uh, a comment I don't agree with all it, the that's time. Up to everybody else. Um, I just had a question yeah. because no this one clarified did, I'm, I'm how they time, got into the program i heard your comments I, yeah. I saw you yeah i heard you yeah but really if the public doesn't know how those names were generated and accepted into a program and the person presenting that program just missed that that fact what is the harm of the board bringing that up but that was only that was only for something like that how about if it's something totally different from that i think we all have enough self-restraint to know are you when, sure, Sharon? No, us. We're talking us. about you. <laughs> Sharon, we're talking about you. You could turn a two-hour me meeting into five. And you're worried about dragging it out. <laughs> no, I was just laughing because I was like, oh, I wasn't because I didn't have your interactions you, yet. And I looked at your face when you said that. I, I just, thought, is this an angry thing or on, is she going to laugh? No, no, no. On she my, knows. I said board members cute, should I be know. able to pose a question or somehow steer it back in the right uh, path i know that the superintendent has done that in the past but i, I maybe it's her it. maybe yeah. it, we should but not she to may dump not on have her. known what you knew because of the situation <laughs> not to dump on her but maybe it should be within her realm she is the meeting leader basically right but She's i think the, your comment she wouldn't have had information but i could have known. i could have yeah. noted i could have given her a note or i could have said something to her because i had the comment long before she finished her presentation right, right um and just like when some of our administrative people come up and speak at our public comment session they're not really giving us a presentation but often they're discussing something that we do for the system and for the students why couldn't the board member ask a question that maybe they even had in their notes but because they're on a two minute time frame they skipped over it and we know they've skipped it and it's really important to the public that they hear that little part that's all I'm saying I'm not saying get into a discussion with the public I, I definitely that's agree that. I think no. you open it a little bit yep it's gonna it it certain people well, it would. Yeah, well yeah, that's the rest of what I'm getting ready to address we, we to need write it down. why do we have to write it down anyhow we already what do, do you mean that. why do we have to say in there that a board member can I mean, we already well, we, do that. Where, where well, we I guess like, we, so it doesn't get long-winded. We can say we can address you in writing at another time period. 
Um, That's when they have a question. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, 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 I don't have a problem with this is all about the people talking. It's not yeah, about the yeah, board. Yeah. So why can't the board just do what we've been doing if you want to? Well, I think they're putting me on notice not to. <laughs> not we. I didn't yeah. say that. No, I no, didn't no, no, no. Uh, and I see where you're coming from. I certainly do. Yeah. I just you're feel gonna, like. You're going to take this and it's going to become this. Well, I agree. And sometimes by not writing it down, we right? still yeah, keep ourselves in, in a box. And I agree with that. Right. Too much writing gives us too much. I guess if you had something to say that was very short and just brief, and then it would be the duty of the board president if it was going on to say, I'm sorry, but this was not a question right. answer. She right. was making a statement. It's over with. Next That's question. where I'm getting and to. And I think next. that maybe that could handle that problem. Oh, well, thank you. So why don't we leave, so leave, it, leave it as it is? I'd say we leave it open. Right. You want to use I'd say we leave it open because periodically we do have a question. And does it? It's not going to lead into a long discussion. Right. And and I would like to see us go back to enforcing that two-minute time frame. Yes. That's gotten completely out of control. Where's our clock? Where's our buzzer? Didn't we used to have a buzzer? And I don't agree yeah, with people signing Sid? up multiple times it, to get longer periods of time. And asking to speak for three organizations. So well, so asking we to speak to, for three organizations and do two minutes for each. Yeah, no. 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 Yeah. I agree. It's two minutes. It has to be enforced. If it's you not, can't. The last couple meetings, it, it has, has not. It has not. And didn't we used to have a time clock that buzzed? Do we still have it? Mr. Pinder does yeah. keep the time. And yeah. let's start I don't using know if that the again. Beeper goes off. Well, it used to. And, and I think it. When I sat in all your meetings, the so year we need I was to make um, sure that beeper goes off. Meetings ago, we had it. I think just last. So I'd like to see that adhered to again. Yeah. And well, I think figuring Sid, out who does stop a speaker well, when they Sid, go out of line. Sid does it usually do it if it's if, if he feels that they're kind of wrapping things up, he'll let it go, which is polite. Yeah. Exactly. But I, exactly. I know there has been a couple times where we I think he thought it was wrapping up. And, and it, it kept going on. Yeah. I don't think that should be Sid's responsibility. Yeah. That should be yours. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I would agree. The two minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and when I'm going to let it uh, only go so long. Right, right. Um, and our specific. Yeah, keeper, but she's beside yeah. you. Right. So you yeah, can yeah. Enforce. And we yeah, have specific. On the chair. <laughs> we have we specific the verbiage <laughs> that says. We'll make Employees' names are not to be mentioned. Employment positions, it. negotiated contracts, any kind of employment things. Somebody needs to stop anyone who goes there as soon as it starts. Whose responsibility is that? Again, I think it falls on the president. Okay. That's are the, you okay with that? I'm, I'm fine yeah. with that. Yeah. But where do we draw the line on that too because there's a there was a discussion going on at last board meeting that I was getting ready to slam the gavel down but that person wasn't here under a um, um, thinking that he may have been here on his own personal time but he still mentioned an employee's but that went until the end or a community per that's true yeah, you're he, right yeah, he so how you're how do I right start? but Annette. he was given a lot longer than two minutes correct correct you're right the I couldn't stop it name because didn't come up to the I end. Was You're going right, to, but You're I exactly didn't right. because and neither did the was here position. as a as a, a person You're to correct. speak and You're so. correct. So I was paying attention. Maybe the two minute will keep that. Yeah, from we we need Jen's going to start there. doing the two minutes. Okay, that so. covers me on that page. Sorry, guys. I I'm, I'm anybody else? Hey, anybody have, moving on? Questions? 32 I'm fine with board reports communications I'm um, 33 is where I have in my last comment so um, board members will be given and I know it's subject to availability and change 24-hour notice for a meeting and generally we do we do more than that do we have any public guideline like are we do we need to be getting these press releases out 48 hours in advance or more um, and are we getting them out in advance enough of a meeting Jackie do you do the meetings if something is canceled yeah okay mm -hmm. all right okay so I'm wondering if we should say public notices go out 48 hours if possible in advance Jeff because they've got to get them what in the do newspaper, they, too. What do they go? 48, 48, hours. 48 hours. Should we write that in here? Because we got the 24 in. I'd leave it at 24. That's for us. 
This is for the oh, public. Okay. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, Just yeah, given that we, we know that. that many times it doesn't get to the newspaper, it gets to the any, newspaper, but they have don't print to do it. do with us. I know, but we need to make sure it got there 48 hours in advance so that they can't say, oh, we didn't well, get it. But once again, that doesn't have anything to do with us. That doesn't have anything to do with our handbook. I think our board needs to ensure public notice has been given in the amount of time I don't want to have required. the responsibility of ensuring that because mm -mm. that puts a responsibility on us as a well, board. Well, that's why we have a department I believe that it. that would be the superintendent's it's like everything responsibility. Else. Yeah, to make, ensure that. Yeah, that's that, not the that might be part of the policy. I think, I think we're giving way too short a notice. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. The, I feel we're giving policy. way too short a notice. And all the notices all yeah. have to be retracted and redone again. And, and then we it's should not go over that into. with the superintendent to make sure. Okay. I just and don't we'll, know if it And we'll be make sure that we'll do that at the January meeting. As a part of that process. Yes. Can you just make a note that we ask her about that when she returns? Sure. Yeah, Greg could, because they are re. They're reorganizing the whole exactly. shop, yeah. exactly, and they could actually have a policy, you know, just exactly. explaining what. But the rule I don't is think that them. we should be a part of that. I, I agree I, with you. I don't want that responsibility. Yeah. But no. keep in mind, if in this That's handbook, not air it talks, department. I know, but either is the superintendent, and those guidelines are in here that she keeps. She's the secretary, and she makes sure that the appropriate documents that, get. That, on is, the board. that is us because she works under member. us. She is a board member. Yeah. She's, she's, I, she's, yeah, we I are the ones that get cited by the OMA Act if we do not publicize properly. It should be in our handbook what the guideline is. I don't care. I mean, you want to. I don't know. I, 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 but we'll talk to Dr. Kane. Yeah, I'm fine and, and getting her input. Let's discuss that. And, at the, and at the even, January even meeting. Dr. Pearson's input because yeah. maybe they'll start saying, we're going to generate this electronically, so there's no, there's not even any discussion that it didn't go well, out maybe in time. We could, Maybe I don't we know could what they're put Dr. Is. Pearson and Doc uh, and Doctor <laughs> Doctor Jeff um, <laughs> you got up, in Jeff. <laughs> up in front. Um, they could have a time slot to be on the but, agenda but for the January yeah, meeting. Yeah, but, but simply because there, we are the ones that get cited. Open. And so, so that we well, get it I don't want to be in the public as to, to run around and However, sure we're doing done, this. So I don't get cited. But just maybe, yeah, that's a personnel issue. That's a personnel issue. We probably need to we probably need to do that in closed session. I think. Because we're, you'll be naming personnel who will be in charge. You'll right. be naming personnel yeah. responsibility. I don't think that is an open no. session. Uh -uh. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So maybe we should put that on closed session then. Just so long as anything that notices. falls under the OMA is Act yeah. is covered. Yeah, about how Just to make sure. Yeah. To in the guidelines exactly. that they asked for. Right. Right. So. In a timely that's all manner. Have, guys. How much Sorry time they need to be done. So long winded. That. So, I mean, it'll be short and sweet, but nonetheless, I, I think my husband said I could just beat a dead horse. <laughs> um, was that it, Chair? That's it for okay. me. Okay. Um, thank you for being patient with me. That's fine. Was there anything? Anybody did anyone else? have any other questions about anything? I think everything else was just kind of um, self explanatory. Because we did cover the last page already. We jumped ahead to page 88, which was one of my concerns, and we took care of that. Everything else is forms and guidelines and everything. The amendment, and we, we chose not to change that at all. It does have four boots needed. So I'm good. That's a good start, girls. Good job. Carrie, did you have any questions? <clears throat> I made a few comments um, and notes throughout. However, I don't feel that they need to be addressed right here. These are just me being new to the board and having a little side note okay. that I thought I'd catch up with. Okay, you guys okay that's fine. Meeting, that's fine. So. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, because every I think everything else is here is just forms and and we've already discussed with um, Darren about the hearings mm -hmm. and appeals and those kind of things. And that's all I <laughs> left on there. Oh, somebody's marker is strong. I'm getting fine. <laughs> I don't know. I Mine's keep, place, so it's I not know. mine. It's like it smells like the permanent um, marker. Did you have anything, Greg, you wanted to uh, no, discuss or add? No, ma'am. All right. So, if there's no other business before this board, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. The ayes have it. Mm like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Ditto. Thank and we'll you very much. We'll see everybody much. back in January. Great. Refreshed and ready to go. Yeah.